welcome back to the Spinner Rack. The Lock-Up. Episode 2. This week we're going to discuss the uh, results of Raw from the last two weeks. Smackdown, we're not really going to discuss because I feel like it's just a repeat and a wash. I think Smackdown would be so much better if it was live. I think Smackdown would be better if they did like they did back in the day and there was the Raw brand and the Smackdown brand. But before we get that started, as always, I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams, my co-host... Oh, I thought you were going to do it. Junior Ruiz. Thank you. Who's being lazy this week with introducing himself because he got a hangover. That's right. You you might ask, how can a man possibly be hungover for three days? This motherfucker liked to drink. <laughs> <laughs> you only turned 32 once, man. Hey, man, I hear that. But, uh, yeah, SmackDown would be better if it was independent overall, I think. Uh, I think... Yes, I know. It, it, it's got to be live. I because, think... look, if you can go on live <sighs> See, and man, you can read results prior, why watch the show? That's a good point. And the thing like, about I that is, though... I don't read the raw results unless I miss Monday Night Raw. Is there is a lot that can be said for not doing a live show. Um, TNA is not live. While we discussed before we were recording that I've just recently started watching TNA and that I feel like they have a weaker product, some of it is superior to WWE in certain aspects. Uh, I feel like maybe some of their guys are a little more loose on the mic. I don't feel like it's as scripted. It's not. I was listening to, uh, here we go again, the Stone Cold podcast and he had Taz on there. Uh huh. And they were talking about it and he asked him how the backstage promos go and he tells him, he says, WWE, you know, obviously is scripted. But with TNA or Impact, they give you bullet points and they let you go. Which is which, what, which is how it used to be in the ad. Yeah, era. that's how it should be. I agree because then you find the character. You know that that whoever's you know delivering this promo, you you can see their strong points and you know like you let their personality kind of ooze out. You know you kind of work with it from there. Can you imagine The Rock and Stone Cold in this day and age, not in the Attitude Era? They wouldn't be as successful yeah, because no, they, they wouldn't be able to be themselves. Yeah, not at an all. an extension of themselves. But, I mean, there's something to be said for not doing a live show. Granted, you could read the results online. It just sometimes it's, I mean, the product of WWE recently has not been of the highest quality. With the exception of WrestleMania 31. Now, since WrestleMania 31, which we reviewed last week, Raw has been decently solid. Yeah. SmackDown, I have not paid much, uh, as much attention to because I'm Smackdown feeling overwhelmed the re- by the amount of wrestling that I'm currently watching. SmackDown is like the rebound. You know, like Raw yeah. is the girl you fell in love with. She breaks your heart at the end of the show. SmackDown is the one night stand rebound and you kind of feel dirty afterwards. Right. And then, you kind of try and make yourself feel better, but ultimately you don't. Exactly. Yeah. Because um, nine times out of ten, SmackDown is just, it's... The you know, the breadcrumbs of what Raw it is. Behind, it's a lot know? of the fat from Raw. Yeah, it's like anything big and juicy that happened on Raw, they constantly shove into SmackDown. So when you watch SmackDown, you get like sixty percent original material, forty percent of it is recycled from Raw. It's like Raw. You have Big Show and Kane versus Ziggler and Bryan or something, and then hey, on SmackDown we're gonna have a singles match: Big Show versus Bryan. And you're like, yeah. Eh. Like, I would be all right if what they did was not kind of recap, so to speak, what happened on Raw. I know recap really isn't the right word, but just kind of bounce off of it as opposed to further the storylines from Raw. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? Totally. It's it's like they have to, like, wait for the next Monday. You know, like, let, let's just touch back and do a rematch or whatever. Right. And then the story will really pick up on Monday again. I feel like they do too much recapping on Raw. Recapping what? What just Raw? happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Well, okay, they need to fill in those three opening hours. Opening night man. Raw <laughs> after WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar comes out. Paul Heyman talks a bunch of shit about how Roman Reigns and, you know, he was smiling. And, you know, you did good, good kid, but you got a long way to go. Blah, blah, blah. I did not need to hear about that 20 more fucking times. Yeah. During that three-hour show. It's just another thing I think Raw would benefit from. Cutting down back to two hours. Everybody says that. Triple H himself said that. I also think, yeah, he said that on uh, Stone, Stone Cold Podcast. Yeah. Stone Cold. The man's every, he's he's the man. It. He's, he's doing it. He's the fucking man. Stone Cold is the man. Stone Cold is the icon. Screw Hulk Hogan. Stone Cold is the icon. 
as far as wrestling, I feel like Stone Cold's even more of an icon than, than The Rock. The Rock is like the breakout sensation. Oh, yeah. By the way, The Rock has an HBO show coming. Yeah. Where he's going to play an ex-football player. It's going to be kind of like an entourage. Dude, I can't. I love The Rock. Rock, that guy can do no wrong. Um, back to Raw and SmackDown. There's so much. There's such a, a wealth, just a massive pool of talent in the WWE that it would serve them to better spread that talent out. Not only that, but give some of those guys a little bit of a rest. Because, I mean, you guys, like we talked about, I don't know if we talked about this last episode, but we talked about how CM Punk complained and uh, other people have come out and complained about like just having to go, go, go and being injured and having to get back in the ring and it's just like too much. Oh, you know what? We didn't talk about this. I read this in uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Uh, they talked to Alberto Del Rio, now known as Alberto Patron. In, uh, Who will be at C2E2? In uh, Lucha Underground. And so will Ricardo. Nice. Um, he talked about, you know, having to just be pushed, and you're not really doing what you want to do, and it's just... And I feel like that they're trying so hard to push out the best, like, the top-of-the-line product every night, that they're failing to realize that they're not. Because really what they're doing is that night in and night out, they're giving you the same fucking thing you see every week. And it gets tiresome and it gets boring. Whereas they could spread it out a little bit. Try and say, okay, this is how we're going to try and focus things every uh, every week. Raw, SmackDown, Raw, SmackDown. Like you said, keep the big stories and the big push to the stories to Raw. But how about like we get more, like, shine more light on the other divisions. Like, give the Divas a couple more matches. Like, why do the Divas only get one match every week? Yeah, and there's so many Divas. And there's so many Divas. That, they're always tag matches. Right? Just to get them all on TV. And, and at that, that point, What happened to all these Divas? Because now it's like, every week, you only, like, it's dwindling down. Right? Like, there's Divas you don't even see anymore. No, totally not. they're still under contract. Like, what right? the hell? It's like, they have all these wrestlers under contract, and they s- sparsely use anyone. Or and they then, use them in, like, live shows or dark matches. Right, which no one ever sees. Why not put these people on? That's why I said, like, it's almost like they need to bring back the SmackDown Raw branding because they could split it up. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, we should do that. Well, we we'll probably do that tonight. What's that? Make our own SmackDown Raw brand. Oh, the show's probably going to be an hour. we got time to fill. Hey, whatever, man. Um, you be uh, you be Vince McMahon. I'll be Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> Very first raw draft, remember that? I do, yeah. I do. They, it would work, man. It would work. I think we should do that. And because then the there's all, we'll have. I got it. There's Go a ahead. lot of talent, man. That's just going underused. Totally. And then you've got guys like, I mean, okay, so Brock Lesnar coming out of WrestleMania news is that he signed an extended contract to stay with WWE. Correct. So what's the first thing they do on Monday Night Raw? Oh, he's going to get a rematch with with Seth Rollins. But oh, Seth Rollins not here. So then Seth Rollins shows up at the end of the show and is like, I'm going to give you a rematch, but I'm feeling kind of jet-lagged, so I'm not going to do it now. Pretty much middle finger to the fans, middle finger to Brock Lesnar, which I think it would have been good for Seth Rollins to have had that rematch with Brock Lesnar on fucking Monday Night Raw. Yeah, Yeah, I understand they want to save that shit for a pay-per-view. I get it. But how long has it been since Brock has wrestled on Raw? Like, give the fans something, man. Because you know what? Whether Vince realizes it or not, there's alternatives out there. And the alternatives ain't that bad because I've been exploring them. TNA leaves a lot to be desired. Lucha Underground is some of the best damn wrestling I have seen in a long time. Dude, so much talent down in Lucha Underground, it's unbelievable. And the way that they're running that show, it's it's just different. I mean, obviously you could go because it's a pre-recorded show and they only record it's not like it travels around. They recorded in this one place. It's kind of almost like how ECW always recorded in the... Uh, the bingo hall. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what the hell they called it. But anyway. ECW Arena is what they it Was it ECW Arena? Yeah. It's it's like an Aztec palace, dude. Uh, Aztec Arena. It looks really cool. Um, the commentators, they've got... Well, I almost said they had Matt, Matt Striker. Striker. Is yeah. it Matt Striker? Yeah. And uh, Vampiro. Nice. Who, by the way, got fat. Really? He looks really weird. But the, the talent there, man, the, some good-ass talent, dude. And it's not just, I mean, people, you would think, Lucha Underground, oh, it's all Mexican. Run. No, it's no, not. It's the John Morrison's on there. 
Yeah, they got, Mundo. A, they got a bunch of guys down there. Bunch of talent, dude. And they're introduced to, like, a, a three-way tag team championship, which, hell, why can't WWE do that? There are so, so many. And they've tried to push three-man teams before. But it seems like every time that they come up with a concept, and you're like, ooh, like, oh, they had the shield. Oh, New Day's coming. Well, New, Day needs, New Day needs to go. New Day, yeah, New Day does need to go. New Day took so much time getting there that by the time they showed up, nobody cared. There was no shield. There was no three MB. The point seemed moot. But you know their gimmick is too. It's too cornball, man. I like that they're because they were originally supposed to come in as heels, and at the last minute they decided no, we're going to make them faces. Well, they're they're going to end up becoming heels, and that's what they need to do. Yeah, you know, can you imagine as them heels? Xavier was out standing at ringside shouting orders a la like some of the greatest managers ever. I'm not saying that Xavier Woods is a manager, but just put him in that kind of role like, you know, I, I'm going to coach my machine in Big E and I'm going to coach my um, my high flyer in Kofi. Dude, they they do so. If, if the WWE let them, they, I think that would be a very successful heel team. No, totally. It, that's the problem. Is It's like... Like I said, they have all this talent. They just like don't know how, what to do with it. And it's like, well, let's fall back on the same laurels that we've rested on. Like I feel like that uh, what they're doing now, it seems like they've had a focus shifting. And there's leading up to WrestleMania and after, they've put more light on the Intercontinental title, which is great. Well, they had to because of the fact that the heavyweight title wasn't on TV. Yeah, well, they need to. I mean, the, it, that's a prestigious title, dude. Those guys, that title went back and forth between so many hands. That's a big piece. Yeah. Like, I feel like that WWE has spent too much time just focusing on the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And then the other belts fall to the wayside. I don't like the fact, I mean, I like the fact that Rollins is champion. I don't like the fact that now it's gonna, the championship's going to be on TV every week. You know? Like, I like not seeing it because it let the U.S. title shine. It let the IC title shine. You remember back in the day when you were the IC title? holder, you were the next guy in line. You knew it. Yeah, Remember totally. Shawn Michaels was the IC holder? Totally. You knew. You were just waiting. Like, that dude, man, that's the guy. Right. And then Razor had it. Right. You know, and then when Brett had it. You know, you are just yeah, like... Yeah, totally. When you know. Remember when Stone Cold had it? Yeah, oh, God, yeah. You and know? then he, he was... And the Rock. Oh, yeah. my God. I remember when the Rock had it. He was like, dare I say, probably the last great Intercontinental Champion. Probably. I can't honestly. I I can't think of any names that just pop up like, "Oh, that dude was really good." So that's now, why I, I will say I like when Cody was the Intercontinental Champion for a while because he brought back the white strap. Uh huh. But I mean, the last memorable holy crap moment holder probably was The Rock, if not Triple H. No, yeah, Triple H was the IC champ, wasn't he? Very briefly. Very briefly. Yeah, I think while Shawn Michaels was the world title, was the world champ. I could be wrong though. I honestly don't remember. For some reason, I feel like those those guys both had the belts. But so, basically, Raw broke down like this. You had Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler for the uh, for the Intercontinental title. Uh, good match, dude. Those guys are both workhorses, man. Daniel Bryan retained. That was a good match. Then you got the, the New Day teaming with the Lucha Dragons. I like them. You like the, the Lucha, Lucha Dragons? Dragons. They I kind like of, them. Dude, okay. See, I have this problem with Sin Cara. I don't like Sin Cara. Why not? Uh, I don't know. Because I feel like it's not the same Sin Cara. It's not. It's not. I know it's not. And I hate when they replace... I hate when they do that. This whole idea of like a character legacy. Like, just be someone else, man. Like, like if Lucha Dragons consisted of... What's that guy? Ultimo Dragon or whatever the hell his name is? That's not his name, is it? Uh, Lucha Underground? Uh, not Lucha Underground. Uh, Lucha Dragons? <laughs> Lucha Dragons. Uh, guys. Uh, no, it's Callisto. Okay, so if if it was him and not Sin Cara, I might like them a little more. And they, they fought against the Ascension and the team of Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. Hunter Hearst Helmsley held the title, not Triple H. Hunter Hearst. Oh, so it was before he was Triple yeah, H. He was the 41st person to hold it on, uh, he won it October 21st, 1996. So this is the issue, right? Is oh, no, Triple H did hold it. They've built this, they have now have a great tag team division. And they're not using anybody like they should be. Like, you know, it, it sucks when you bring guys up from NXT and they just dwindle. Which seems to be what happens to most of the NXT guys outside of, like, the Shield. What about, um, what are you thinking about? What's, uh, Neville? 
Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, how funny is that? We get a promo at the beginning of Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania that Neville, that Adrian Neville's coming. And then he wrestles the same night. When have they ever done that? Very true. When have they ever done that? Very true. And Curtis Axel, of all people, for his first opponent. It's funny because I just saw his name. Yeah. You said it, yeah. He was the 41st, the 141st champion, IC title holder. Who? Curtis Axel. He's been really? 151. That title has changed hands 151 times. Daniel wow. O'Brien is current holder. Wade Barrett is 150. But, to be fair, they list, like, if it's, like, Dolph Ziggler, The Miz, then Dolph Ziggler again, they'll list it that way, and they each have a number. Right on. Well, I mean, that makes sense. Damian Mizdow versus Stardust. First of all, when are they going to change Mizdow back to Sandow? Sandow? I don't know. I, you know, I don't, like, I loved, loved Damian Sandow's character when he was with Cody Rhodes. They were Team Rhodes Scholars. Yeah. Like, I liked when he was the savior of the unwashed masses. That was funny. Like, his shtick was great. And I feel like he needs to bring some of that back with a little bit of what he's learned being Mizdow and just become Sandow again. Yeah. But, uh, so it was funny to see those two guys that had a minute rivalry in new incarnations. Last time, Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow had, you know, now it's Stardust and Mizdow. But uh, that went to Mizdow, so at least it looks like they're giving him a push. Yeah. I just wish them to give him a push with his own name. Um, what do you think about John Cena as the U.S. title holder now? Every week he's going to come out and, like, you know, who wants it? That, I guess it just depends on who comes out, you know? I mean, if they keep this formula, it, we already know, oh, well, I don't know if it's been, I'm sure, I don't know if it's been announced on TV. But I know, like, they've already said Rusev versus Cena for the United States title at Extreme Rules. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. So. Oh, okay, so obviously then Cena will never lose. Because if the match is already signed. See, that's something, like, they need to learn that comic books also need to learn. Stop spoiling your shit. Yeah. Don't name, don't put that match on the card. If Even if, even if the powers that be know that match is going to take place, don't put that shit on the card until, like, the week before. Well, you can't because you got to sell the pay per view, you got to sell the tickets. People don't know the card, they're not going to go. Well, that's true, you know. But anyway, I mean, he wrestled Dean Ambrose and retained. Then, you know, Dean Ambrose, I had such fringe. Yeah, I'm so tired of that. I had such high hopes for that guy when they broke up with the Shield. I says, Reigns is going to be the power man, Rollins will be a good face, and Ambrose will be a great heel. Boy, was I wrong, right. Rollins, one of the best recent heels in memory. Or one of the best heels in recent memory, excuse me. Ambrose, they, they're pushing that lunatic fringe shit down my throat. I got tired of it, and now I, I just look at him as a joke. Because it's like it's like putting somebody who you know is kind of like, this dude can do some really screwed up stuff. And putting them in like an environment where they're like, no, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that. You yeah. Know? Trying to eat a prime steak with plastic silverware. Right on, man. You know what I'm saying? Right, trying to cut a steak with a plastic knife. Yeah, it's just like... It's not going to happen. Yeah. They need to take a more Rowdy Roddy Piper approach with Dean Ambrose. I feel like Dean Ambrose could be the 21st century Rowdy Roddy Piper if they just let him. Because the guy's willing to take some bumps, dude. He's he got powerbound out of the ring onto the ladder. Yeah. Didn't he get powerbound through an announce table just recently? I believe so. Like, the guy gets messed up. It's you know you gotta you gotta unleash the chain. Um, that after Dean Ambrose got his ass whooped by Cena, we got our last match in the career of AJ Lee. AJ Page Naomi against Natalia and the Bell Twins. Here's my why the hell is Natalia not holding that Divas title and punishing every broad on that uh, roster? <sighs> When this you, is when you go with pure in ring skill, and I'm not knocking any of the other divas. Don't get me wrong, but when you go, I'm oh, sorry, guys, I'm adjusting here. Ugh. When you go pure technical skill, it makes sense for her to hold that belt. Yeah, absolutely. She can go, you know, dare I say, the CM Punk route, four hundred and something days, thirty something days with the belt. You know, I'd like to see that. I'd like for them 
to put the title on Natalia and have her do a run like that where every week she calls out a different diva. She deserves it. I feel like that this is this is why I think Vince needs to step away because Vince has this skewed idea of what is and what should be. And I also think that they should drop the Divas belt. I think that fucking belt needs to go away. And I think they need to give more props to these women. And I think they need to bring, bring back the women's championship. Mm, that would Fuck the Divas title. Because I, I just don't like it. Like, Diva to me, it doesn't exude what you want in a female role model. Right. Like, Divas are bitchy, they're bossy, they're, you know... It's... Ah, it just doesn't work for me, man. It doesn't work for me. And with a Wonder Blaze bringing back that WWE Women's title back, I felt like it was a perfect opportunity to let's just do away with this Divas title and bring back the Women's Championship. They won't. And I feel like the reason Natalia doesn't have it is because she's not the pretty poster girl face that Vince McMahon wants for the WWE Divas division. Yeah, I can see And that. not that she's not... Natalia's a good-looking woman. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But she doesn't stack up to them, some of these more supermodel-esque women that are in the WWE. Right. And that's a shame because she is, pound for pound, the most talented woman in that locker room. Mm-hmm. Next to, I think next would be Naomi, in my opinion. I'd say Paige. Really? Dude. The, you know I, what? That's, that's, that's true. Paige has got some skill. Her man. podcast. Literally, she can She's go. She's got a podcast? Well, no. She was on somebody's podcast is what oh. I meant to say. She was seriously wrestling before she was born. Her mom was pregnant with her, and she was still wrestling matches. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, her mom still wrestles to this day. Really? Her entire, her, she, her entire family is wrestlers. Her mom, her dad, um, I think her brothers and her sisters, they're all wrestlers. Her, she had her first professional match at 14. Yeah, I'd heard that. Like, yeah, she's, she's, been she's wrestling, a good wrestler. Dude, like, she's a good wrestler, man. You know? Like, that's what... I, that's, that's why I feel like there's so much, like... Can't forget about Charlotte though. If you're talking about skill, that girl got no. Some she skill. well, she's not in the main roster yet. That's true. Either. True. No, she is. I'm surprised she didn't come up. Like Melissa has listened to me bitch constantly because we watch wrestling together. That it pisses me off that there's all these pretty faces and like where the fuck are the Luna Vachans? Yeah, you know. Okay. This is you know that's why I kind of I didn't realize that I appreciated AJ Lee as much as I did till AJ Lee was gone. It's only been like two weeks. I know, but. <laughs> You, you sit back and, like, you reflect a little bit, and then WWE also does a reflection, and then you realize, here's a woman that was striving to change the face of what the divas are. She wasn't trying to be the cookie-cutter, hot, little sexy poppy thing that they try and put down your throat, even though she was all those things. Yeah. You know, she's trying to be different, like Paige, the anti-diva, which I don't know why they dropped that moniker from her when she came up from NXT. Because they wanted Well, she had it. I believe when she first debuted, but then they tried to turn her into a face, and she dropped it. Yeah, I think it still would have worked. It works as a heel. I yeah. mean, I think it would still worked as a face. Well, maybe because what's wrong with you know being different? Very true. You know, not everyone's got to be a Bella. Best diva promo I've ever heard was AJ saying that wrestling skill is not sexually transmitted. Yeah, see, you know, I have a problem with that because everyone's like, "Man, that shit was awesome." But then I think Phil, people fail to realize she's married to CM Punk. True. But remember, she was doing her shit. She was you know, winning titles before all of that. Whereas the Bellas are now getting a push because of... But the Bellas, have, the Bellas have held the belt before John Cena was ever with Nikki. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. This isn't Nikki's first round as the, women, the Divas champion. She's had the belt before. Okay. But no, there's and there's not enough of like it's like I said, you get the same Divas matches week in, week out, week in, week out. It's the they need to change. I agree. Um You know, it's it's weird because they don't get storyline time on TV either. No, they, they don't. They don't get enough. And that's where like if they change the formula of what they're doing a little bit and allow for more time for everybody, you know. It'd they be could nice do to, for them to like put it actual attention and detail into a diva storyline. They could push, okay, Raws could be a little bit of divas, a little bit of tag team, more concentrated on the focus on, like, the icy title and then a little bit of the the heavyweight. And then SmackDown is where you could really shine on that mid-card and the divas and the tag team division. Because, like, the fact that you have a tag team match on Raw and instead of it being it's two tag teams teamed together against two tag teams, 
it's fucking stupid. It's like a waste. Yeah. Like, how are, you, are these any of these teams going to really shine if you don't separate them? And they need to because right now, man, that tag team division is stacked, dude. And they could they could have a golden age of tag teams again in the WWE, much like they did back during the Attitude Era when you had the Dudley boys, you had the Hardy boys, you had Edge and Christian. Yeah, but you the, know, the thing about those three teams that you just named, they those guys have all been tag teams for a long time. Whereas the tag teams nowadays, not counting, I would say, the Usos, dude, they're just two guys thrown together. They don't have time to just, you know, like, really form that. As far as the New Day, I could agree. Well, Cesaro and Kid. Cesaro and Kid are, are new. Exactly. Um, the Ascension, nobody gives a shit about. Well, the Ascension, The Ascension has been they, mishandled. Yeah, they've been mishandled. But I would guess they fall into the category of, okay, you know, they, they gel together, they've been together long enough. Yeah, they have Same thing with the primetime players. Yeah, same thing with the primetime players. I mean, yeah, yeah, the split, players. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. By the way, <laughs> I showed you those promos earlier. Yeah. Best damn tag team promos. Dude, those were great promos. You know who used to have a really good uh, outlet for getting those promos across? The Dirt Sheet, I believe it was called. It was uh, John Morrison and The Miz on WWE.com before the network was around. Yeah. And they would cut, like, five to six-minute segments, and they would bash whoever they were. Dude, it was funny stuff, man. It was good stuff. Well, yeah, now I just realized that in all this talk of wrestling, I forgot to mention that... uh, when Seth Rollins came out, and this is probably like 20 minutes ago now, people are going to listen to this, and I totally forgot to bring this up, that Brock signs this extended contract with WWE, first thing they do, suspend him indefinitely. Yeah. What? Still limited dates. you got to find a way to write him off TV. No, I guess. It's but just... yeah, why announce that he signed this big contract? Yeah, why? If anything, you could have been... Well, they did that to get the numbers up, because people, you know how people were perceiving WrestleMania 31 main event with Roman Reigns possibly going over. Yeah. So you figure, oh, Brock signed a contract. He's not going to lose. I want to see this match. I really think the handling of that match was the smartest thing the WWE could have done. Because there are people that just don't like Brock. and then But I think that the people that don't like Brock heavily outweighed the people that just didn't want to see Roman Reigns go over. I mean, mean about, uh, I, I meant that backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it, the people that didn't want to see Roman Reigns go over heavily outweighed the people that disliked Brock. I don't like Brock. And I did not want to see Roman Reigns go over. Did you so hear about me, his family? Uh, Reigns' family? The Anoa'i the Ano- family? I don't know how to pronounce it. But uh, they said the Alpha and Sika were livid. And uh, I forget which one is his dad. It's one of those two. They said that he was actually, he wanted to riot and he really wanted to kill somebody. He was pissed because the whole family was told, including Roman Reigns, that he was going over. So that's why they had so many of his family members in attendance because there was supposed to be this huge celebration. And uh, they said no, you know. And uh, Rollins, they said, didn't find out he was getting being coming champ till uh, right before the show started. Really? Yeah. They yeah. said Lesnar knew. Lesnar knew he was dropping the title before he even signed the contract, the extension. But uh, they said uh, Rollins didn't know he was going over until a couple hours before the pay per view went on. So that leads us to this refueled Cena. Well, it's it's really just starting, in my opinion. This, uh, not Cena, but Orton-Rollins feud, okay. which I love, which has made me a fan of Randy Orton. Mm-hmm. Um, now we know, thanks to a match on Raw, that he is the number one contender now. Mm-hmm. Do you think they're gonna that Rollins will drop that belt to Orton? No. No? No. You don't see it happening? Too much time invested in Rollins. Yeah. Everybody looks at it as every, they, the WWE invest, was investing in Roman Reigns, investing in Roman Reigns. But when you really look and think about it, it's all been Rollins. It's it's true because he's been the top heel for a good what almost half a year, maybe if not a whole year. You know. So do you think? That and then have him hold that briefcase for as long as he did. Yeah, I then, know. No. You know what's funny? This is something I've noticed. You know, uh, this is off subject, but TNA has a similar concept well, of money. In the bank. A number one contender case. Oh yeah. It's just a steel briefcase with the number one on it. Yeah. All right, then. Which is held by, I believe, Austin Aries currently. Yeah. Uh, it's the same thing, oh. ladder match kind of thing. Oh, my God. Dude, they've got a, an epic ladder, tag team ladder match coming up Friday that looks like a stacked deck. It looks like it's awesome. Hardy Boys. Dude, like, it just... A lot of weird teams happening, though, over there. Man, Hardy DC tweets as well. Um, really? Yeah, Sunday. 
I'm excited to see the Hardy Boys in action again after so long. Love those guys back in the day. But yeah, it's you're right. If you really do look at it, they invested a lot of time into Seth Rollins. A lot. A lot more than they did Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. So it was almost like they wagged the dog on us. Yeah. Us as fans were like, fuck this. Roman Reigns doesn't deserve to be champion. And they were like, oh. That's what they did. Oh. I, fucking A, man. I respect that. See, now, and a lot of fans will look at it as, well, they only did that because they knew people were going to boo Roman Reigns. Well, the smart fan would sit back and look at it and be like, ah, like we just did. So they actually yeah. built Roman, they built uh, Seth Rollins right under our eyes and we didn't even realize it. Right? You know? Yeah, they made you think that Roman Reigns was going to get it. But, I mean, because even myself, like, I really didn't think after getting his ass kicked by Randy Orton that he would cash at WrestleMania. But at the same time, seeing him earlier in that event, I thought, man, how long is he going to carry the case around? Yeah. Like, it's got to go soon. Yeah, you only get one year to do it. So my question is, now, does Money in the Bank happen after SummerSlam? No, before. I think it's either June or July. Okay, so... Do you think that we will not see the Brock rematch until SummerSlam? Yeah. You think they'll hold off till SummerSlam? Yeah. Do you think that Roman Reigns will win Money I mean, in the Bank? I've been too long, but yeah, I think so. Do you think Roman Reigns will win Money in the Bank? That's a good question. I don't know. I guess it depends on how many Money in the Bank. Well, yeah, because I've said they used to do two, but there's only one title now. Um, I could see them doing that. You know, so it gives him an ex- uh, uh, a way back into the title picture. I mean, who else do you give it to? There's nobody, you know. Yeah, there's there's not really anybody else to give it to. Unless they give it to Daniel Bryan. Which I feel like the best way to go with Daniel Bryan right now. Like, I kind of feel like that guy's never going to get his shot at that belt again. But then I feel like. Oh, he will, but it won't happen as what if, grand as it did the first Yeah, time. it won't. Yeah, no. What if they just give Daniel Bryan a really friggin' excellent Intercontinental Championship run. I'd be alright with that. And then, let him get that title for a while. Yeah. That'd be good. But will they do it? Yeah, will they do it? It's, that's that's really the question. Yeah, you know, here's something else I've been thinking of. Back to the Divas. There's so many of them. Why not create a tag team championship for the Divas? Yes, because I know Impact does it. Oh, they do have, they? I believe they. I don't know if they still do. I know they used to have uh, te- women's uh, knockouts tag champions. Why not do that? Yeah, but I mean, when you look at the list of divas, who actually, who, who, you get the Bellas, you got Natalia, you got Naomi, um, Paige, Rosa Mendez, I guess. Because she's what? Fan, well, she's with Fandangos. Is that it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, that, it, it's very thin. It's six. Um, what's her name? Cameron? The other Funkadactyl? Seven, if you count her? Uh, Summer Rae, eight, because uh, they pushed Emma back down to NXT. Eight Divas? Oh, well, that's not really many. That I can think of. Tamina, if you got her, nine. Yeah, that's not really enough to support a tag division, is it? They got a lot of a lot of Divas down in NXT, though, man. A lot. Charlotte, Bailey, lovely Sasha Banks, um, that blonde chick, I forgot her name. There's No. Yeah, there's like another three. There. I know there's two blondes down there. Another two blondes whose names I can't remember. Alexa Bliss. That's who I'm thinking of. Her. Um, what's that one girl's name? There's a there's a bunch. I can't even remember all their names. The uh, the chick uh, from... She was in... When Sasha Banks won the belt. Yeah. She I know was in that match. Witch. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so... So there's actually more divas in NXT than there is just about on the, the same. roster. Almost, yeah. Now, here's the other thing is... Watching TNA and the knockouts. Awesome con. Why the hell is there not a woman like this in WWE? Well, she was in WWE. Was she? Yeah. Very briefly, she came in. She was called Karma. You don't remember that? I think I do remember that. It was right around the time Michael Cole was doing that whole heel WrestleMania stick against Jerry Lawler. And she came in and she destroyed his ass. And um, she came in. They did all these promos. And her promos were like she had Barbie dolls. And she was like ripping the Barbie dolls apart. And um, she finally made her debut, and then she had to leave the company because she got pregnant. Really? Yeah. And then her contract expired, and they just chose not to renew it. Well, that's messed up. Man. So she like they they hyped her so much, man. She had all these vignettes and everything, and it did absolutely nothing. 
because she came in for maybe one or two. But she never even had a match, I don't think. I think that's what the Divas division is missing, is some kind of intimidating, like a Luna Vachon-esque character. Mm. Like someone's just crazy. And like, I, and that, I think that's the problem with the Divas division, is it's this whole cookie-cutter idea of like, it's got to be the image. And man, it needs to be more. Oh, than Alicia that. Fox. Alicia Nine. Fox. <laughs> it needs to be more than that. It really does. Layla. Ten. She's still around. I think so. So there is enough that if they added four more girls to the roster, they could create four women's tag teams, and then still have three or four singles. You know, six singles, and then you could get prominence there. Yeah. Like, why not? Uh, like I like you said, dude, Natalia deserves to have that belt. Why not then dump the belts back into tags, give them the belts, first off. Then bring the Funkadactyls back together. You've got two teams that have already worked together. Yeah. Then you just have to build from there. It's not that hard. Yeah. Layla's tagged with uh, someone before. I can't remember what her name was. Tag with a few of them. Tag with Alicia Fox. Paige but I mean, Alicia Fox. Yeah, it's, you know, they could, they could do it. It yeah. could be done. I think it would do a lot. But uh, I don't know, man. It's there's there's a lot going on there. I, the, the Brock thing, I just I don't get. But last the the last match of Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania was Randy Orton. We said, we talked about this already. Uh, right back at Roman Reigns. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. That was where we got Randy Orton as the number one contender. Okay. So, you know, I thought that was funny. Like, why not? That just seemed weak because they were like, "Oh, Randy Orton's got to pick the two partners." You automatically knew one of them was going to be right. Uh, oh no, Reigns. that was that was the following Monday. Oh okay. Well, you knew automatically one was going to be Roman Reigns. Oh no, I'm sorry. That that you're actually you're right. It was Randy Orton right back in Roman Reigns Reigns versus Seth Rollins Big Show and Kane WrestleMania following Monday. Mm-hmm. That Randy Orton right back Roman Reigns versus each other for number one contender was last week's Monday, not right. this week's, but the week before. Which that also had Randy Orton. Defeated Kane in a disqualification in the beginning. You had Seth Rollins versus Adrian Neville, which I was like, dude, how lucky for that guy. Yeah, His right. second match on the main roster, he gets to wrestle the champion. Yeah. Even if he does lose, still. Uh, Stardust versus John Cena, U.S. title. Obviously, Cena was retained. Yeah. Are they ever going to do anything with Stardust? I don't know. Like, is he just going to be like the weird enigma? I mean, even Goldust was the weird enigma, but hell, he had the IC title for a while. Very true. You know what they, sh- you know, I think they should keep you know, going back to the brand split. Mm-hmm. Keep the IC title on Raw. You have the IC title and the heavyweight title on Raw, and you go US title, and you bring back the light heavyweight or a cruiserweight or the cruiserweight. Yeah, you bring that back because there's a lot of guys I could see Cody Rhodes or yeah. Callisto. Um, I wouldn't say Dean Ambrose, but. I mean, you get, hell, probably even Daniel Bryan had he dropped the IC title. Yeah. You know, those kind of Yeah, guys. totally. Totally, man. Or how the European title, whatever. Yeah. I mean, they do do a lot of European tours. So, uh, let's see. Seth Rollins, Neville, I said that. Stardust, John Cena. Paige Naomi against the Bell Twins. Again, you know, I, I just feel like that they need to decide, while I feel like Natalia really deserves to have that strap, it's probably going to win... Nikki drops it, it's either going to go to Paige or uh, Naomi. Or Naomi, And I feel like, why not give Naomi her shot? She deserves it. Yeah. You know, she's been putting in the work. She deserves that title. Then let her drop it to Natty and let Natty go on a fucking run because she deserves it. Oh, yeah. You know, she's the she's the legacy of the Hart Foundation. She deserves a good run with that belt. Oh, yeah. And wouldn't it look good for her to have that Dita's title while Tyson Kidd is, exactly. is the tag team champion? Yeah. I liked back in the day when Staples had gold, you know? Yeah. That was great stuff. That was like when I thought Dolph Ziggler and AJ Lee were both going to have the belts at the same time. But it never panned out. Right. Um, Ryback versus Luke Harper. I don't care. You just don't care? Why Why aren't they pushing that guy more? Who? Luke Harper. Or Ryback. Ryback is always going to be mid card. You think so? Mid card, mid mid card to lower mid card. He may once in a while get an upper mid card thing, but nah, I don't see it. I think they had their thing with him. They dropped the ball on it. Yeah. You know, as far as Luke Harper goes, man, as 
the guy has no character. And I know that's, it sounds funny saying that because the guy He's is... He's almost like Psycho Sid. Yeah, exactly. Look what happened there. I, honestly, yeah, but even Psycho Sid had the belt once. But you know what? You got to go back and... I'm sorry, man. Bray Wyatt needs to start... He needs, he needs to take fucking Har- uh, Harper and Rowan back because they're not doing shit, especially Rowan. Yeah, no, totally not. Or if not, I was reading online what they should do for Bray Wyatt is have him come out and uh, just start running through people. Like, random. You know, who's my opponent this week? Because... He's cutting these awesome promos. Yeah. And then what happens? He gets squashed. Yeah. You know? Uh, what do you do now? If, if they decide to give uh, Sting and Bray Wyatt a chance. Is he going to have Sting lose twice in a row? Yeah, totally. You know? Or you have Bray Wyatt lose twice in a row. Yeah, so what? Now Bray Wyatt just becomes the guy that gets his ass kicked by Legends? How about, yeah, right? No, this is he, he becomes the next Barry Horowitz. <laughs> no, what you need? Yeah, right? <laughs> you have... A, a formula that kind of worked, mm-hmm. but in a different aspect now. Punk had the SES. Do something similar with Bray Wyatt where he comes out and he converts or he saves people. Whatever. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And then uh, you got Lucha Dragons versus the New Day. Why? I don't know. I give it to Lucha Dragons. Well, they did. They, they won okay. that match. Um, again, you know, this is... they. I appreciate the fact that they've got... But they need to, like, build up these rivalries a little more. Yeah. I feel like what they're doing with... Uh, with those promos that the primetime players cut, I would like to see them to get in a rivalry with the New Day, with the Ascension. I would like to see those three teams start having like some epic matches against each other. Build it up. Throw the Usos the in there. That, like, that, get it. That's the problem with the Divas. They don't build anything. Like, okay, you, you, and you and you in a tag match. Okay, that match went good, so you two are going to fight one-on-one now. Uh, yeah. They, used to, and it's like, why are you no guys beefing? Oh, because of the, the, the tag match from last week. Exactly, that's my there, problem. There's no building. That's my problem. Which they seem to do pretty well with like the IC title... And the world title, but not with the Divas Division or the tag team titles. Right. Uh, Roman Reigns versus the Big Show. Uh, you know what? Again? Big Show and Kane need to sit the hell down. Yeah, no, totally. I'm tired of seeing them. You know, and then every you know every time they need to re- reinvigorate them, what do they do? They, they have them get pissed off or at somebody, and I mean, they become their big giants or whatever. Yeah. You know? And if, Big if, Show goes on a rampage, and nah. If I'm not mistaken, didn't... Uh... How do I feel like that Big Show just wrestled? It must have been on a SmackDown that he wrestled Eric Rowan. Yeah. Or Eric Rowan. You know what they need to do? Bring back Mark Henry again, mm-hmm. instead of just cutting a promo. And you put his ass and Big Show together, and you give them the straps. Yeah, totally. Why not? I'd like to see that. Let them get a nice little run, and then get them the hell out. Yeah. Putting over the younger talent. Yeah, you know? totally. Totally. And then you had, uh, speaking of Mark Henry, Sheamus, who returned with... The absolute Mark Henry versus Sheamus. Mark Henry versus Sheamus. Sheamus won. We're absolute worst look, dude. Like That's he looks bad. terrible. That's bad. Like the Mohawk ain't bad, but the weird braid on the beard. In the beard that just looks awful. You know who you reminded me of? Remember the Highlanders, the tag yeah, team guys? I do. They were so hyped up with all these vignettes, and they stuck around for a month, then got yeah. shipped to SmackDown, and then disappeared. <sighs> terrible. Then you had the match everyone's been waiting for: the Miz versus. Damien Mizdow. Okay? And what the fuck do they do? But they give Mizdow a loss. Why? Why do, in my opinion, I keep I feel like they keep building up momentum for Damien Sandow just to shit on him. Shit on him. Like they give him the money in the bank. Oh yeah. And then they totally scrub him out to see no like he's not shit. You remember how when when we first started doing the spinner rack and I first got back into wrestling. I kept talking about why are they not giving the tag team straps to Road Scholars? Why are these guys not getting the belts? Why are they? And they deserved those belts. Yeah, those guys could have had a epic tag team run. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, why not bring those guys back together? Because then you'd have to take uh, Stardust and make them Cody Rhodes again. Why not just you know if hell they like to slap stupid gimmicks on Damian Sandow, slap a fucking stupid gimmick on him, pair him with Stardust. Bring them back out together. Give them the straps. Because both those guys are damn good wrestlers. And both of them are just underused and just pretty much crapped on. Damien said not more than Cody Rhodes. Oh, yeah. But yeah. there's there's a great division. They could do so much more with it. And The Miz, I freaking hate that guy so much. So much. He does a great heel. I remember watching him on The Real World when he talked about how he was a huge WWF fan. For those of you that don't remember, it was WWF at one time. And 
he had a character and he was going to be the Miz. Man, kudos to that dude for taking a dream and actually getting to see it through because not many people get to do that. Otherwise, I freaking can't stand him. I do love the fact that my two-year-old gets excited when his music comes on and screams, awesome! I, I, but otherwise, I can't stand that guy. There's a lot of work that could be done to make it a better product. And uh, in fact, there's going to be some shifting of what this show is going to be from here on out. Um, considering we've pretty much focused on WWE, you know, it's not going to be uh, as much to talk about every week. You know, we've almost filled an hour this week, but we've gotten to a lot of opinions. And if we keep doing another that every week, who the hell is going to want to listen to it? Yeah. No so sure. starting next week, you know, we're going to talk a little about WWE. We're going to focus on some more news. Um, something I would definitely think we're going to touch on next week is uh, WWE dropping the ball on Kurt Angle. Um, this whole controversy with uh, Rey Mysterio possibly coming up for murder in Tijuana. Yeah. You know, these are big stories happening right now in, in the world of wrestling. And, uh, you know, we'll have plenty of more stuff coming in the, the weeks. Possibly when we get the spotlight started, maybe we can get some wrestlers. I know C2E2 is coming up. I know our, my boy here, Junior, is definitely get some interviews with some wrestlers. Uh, if you haven't checked out our previous interviews with wrestlers, check them out. They're all there up on YouTube. The Bella Twins, Diamond Dallas Page, Mankind. You know, you guys got some damn good interviews, man. Kevin Nash, Jake the Snake, Jerry Lawler. Fred Ottman, who, you know, is a shockmaster slash tugboat. Tugboat, tugboat. You know. Um, tugboat. Cause, uh, Chris Daniels and Kazarian, you know, a lot of guys on there. A lot of good stuff, man. This has been episode two of The Lockup. Comics Rubik's home for wrestling. Because we are big wrestling fans here. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can get this guy over here to watch a little bit of that Lucha Underground. I'm trying, man. I'm You're going to love it, man. It's like got this weird cinematic oh, style around Rodriguez. It, it's good stuff, man. I know. I'm not even getting into it. Trust me. It's good stuff. I know. But, uh, yeah, so we're gonna. it's going to be a shift in focus, episode three. Going to get into more news, more behind-the-scenes stuff. Cover NXT a little bit. Got to love the NXT. Got to talk about my man, Finn Balor, the Demon. Guy's got some of the greatest theatrical wrestling intros I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. Can't wait. I can't wait for him not to come up to the roster. So they can I, screw him up. Because I feel like if he comes up to the main roster, he's just going to get screwed. Yeah. He's going to get left in the dust. And they need to build NXT up to be you a You know what they thing, need to do again? Is do an NXT kind of takeover. No pun intended. Takeover. Mm-hmm. You wait. You bring up Sami Zayn. You bring up Kevin Owens. You bring up... Um, Finn Balor, you bring them, Hideo Itami, you bring them all at the same time as a group, the way the Nexus came in. Totally. You know, I, I think that'd be badass, but you can only do that if you have the next crop of main event, or yeah. NXT main eventers down there. Yeah, no, totally. You know? That's the next thing they need to, that's another thing that they should bring back that would help WWE a lot with the amount of talent they had, stables. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But uh, we'll talk about all this stuff and more future episodes as always you can check out everything we do at comicsremix.com comicsremix our facebook page follow us on twitter comicsremix spin rack uh you can email us brian or junior at comicsremix you gotta check out uh (laughs) check out alex's toy reviews like i said on this week's episode of breaking the fourth wall he did an excellent one of the uh sergeant slaughter elite but so as always, check out all that and more. I'm your that host, Big last B. Last week, this week he did that uh, Marvel Select. Yeah, I know, no, but I mentioned it. Oh, uh, okay. breaking gotcha, the fourth gotcha, wall gotcha. Monday. The show. You know, show. plus it since this is the wrestling show. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Thor really don't apply to wrestling unless yeah. you know Marvel's going to start licensing their characters. Hey, CM Punk wrote the to, Thor story in the annual, and it was actually pretty good. It was actually not bad. But uh, that's it for this week's episode of the Lockup. <laughs> we didn't really just lock up. No, not at all. <laughs> that would have been... They just cleaned the house. That would have been an oddly <laughs> homoerotic for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Always, I'm your host, Big B. My co-host, oh, Junior, Junior I Gotta Pee Really Bad Ruiz. Yes. We'll see y'all next week. You're on the lockup. Laters.